Making Windows 2000 Professional Boot Discs. You need to have four floppy disks. Insert your Windows Professional CD into your CD drive. And what we're going to do, I'm going to press the directory here. And we can see there's a directory called Boot Disk. We'll go to that directory. I'm going to list it out there again. And what we have to do, we type in Make Boot. And then they will ask us to insert the floor one of the four floppy disks into our drive. We specify the letter of our drive and when we're ready we would be pressing enter in order to complete. Hi and welcome to the Windows 2000 professional setup. First of all we're going to go through the system requirements. In order to set up the Windows professional you need to have a 133 megahertz Pentium processor or higher. You need to have a memory of 64 megabytes that's for the Intel based processors. You need to have one or more hard disks with a two gigabyte partition. You have to have a network of one or more network adapters. Your display monitor or video adapter has to have VGA resolution or higher. You need to have a CD-ROM drive, a three and a half inch disk drive, a keyboard and a mouse. There are two types of disks in the Windows 2000 environment. There are basic disks and dynamic disks. Basic disks are similar to the 9598 NT disk environments where you can have four primary partitions or three primary and one extended. As dy dynamic disks are new to Windows 2000, there are no partitions, they're just volumes. You can convert a basic disk to a dynamic disk, but you can't convert a dynamic disk to a basic disk. There is no limit to the number of volume. Disk configuration is stored on the disk instead of in the registry, as it is in the basic disk configuration. There are also different file systems available for the Windows 2000. The standard one which was uh, first introduced was FAT, which is a file allocation table. Is, uh, in Windows 2000, the FAT system also supports long file names, which is also a new feature. FAT is good for small partitions and for dual booting with a system that does have only FAT. FAT32 supports smaller cluster size than FAT, so it's more efficient and then the most preferred file system is the NTFS file system which has many benefits including encryption, security, compression, disk quotas, sparse files and size. So you're able to control the size of each individual file. Installing from the CD is one of the options for the installation of Windows 2000. Installing over a network or automated installation process. We're going to start with uh, a basic CD installation. This is uh, when you have a, a previous Windows 2000 operating system and you're upgrading through the setup wizard from the CD into uh, either the Windows 2000 or the Windows Server. So what you would do, you could either run from the CD or you could run from the boot disks. You'll be asked to accept their standard license agreement, which you should read through and then check off if you accept. If you don't accept then you won't be able to proceed with the installation. Here you would enter the product key which is um, available on the CD when you purchase it. The installation process has also a special options selection where you can select your language options, um, there's advanced options and accessibility options which are also available when you do have the system operating and running. The file installation system um, begins to copy files into the system. Um, the computer is then restarted and you are brought to a setup screen. This is the same screen as you would get after you've inserted your boot disks. They've got three choices on the setup screen. You, you can either set up by pressing enter, you can repair your existing Windows 2000 professional, or you can quit and uh, stop the process. To repair or new, after choosing enter you are presented with the choices. This installation is done from a previous Windows platform. You choose either to repair the previous versions or press escape to install a fresh copy. The existing partitions are displayed on the blue screen as you can see in front of you. The screen shows a listing of all the partitions on the computer. Here you can delete and set up new partitions. Select the partition you want to install Windows 2000 on. Afterwards, the system will ask you to confirm your choice. 
So you can press seed to confirm it, or you can press escape to choose a different partition. In order to delete an existing partition, you press L, you would press escape to choose a different folder, or if you want to quit the setup altogether, you would press F3. Setup files are then copied onto your system into the installation folder. Your computer system will then start to reboot and bring up a new screen once again. This is the GUI mode screen where you're asked to continue into the setup process and it begins to detect devices on your system. It, it asks you to, uh, to choose your regional settings where you're able to customize your settings from this screen which you're also able to do once the system is installed. The setup wizard then begins to continue the setup process and this is where they would ask you for your name and your organization. Afterwards on the next screen you have to enter a computer name and a password if you choose and this will be used for the local administrators. Then the date and time is asked. You can also change this feature when the, the system has been set up. Afterwards you're going to be asked for your network components. Your system will try to detect what network components are available. After the detection, the system will try to locate a DHCP server on the network. You are then prompted to choose a typical or custom setting. If you choose typical, that includes client for Microsoft networks, file and print sharing for Microsoft networks, and TCP IP. After that, you're asked to choose whether what work group or what domain your system will belong to and it continues with the network installation process. The final stages of the installation of Windows 2000 are as the remaining files are copied onto your system. Configuration is applied and saved to your local hard drive. Temporary files are removed and the computer restarts. Upon restart, the computer is going to set up the network identification wizard and if you are a lonely user on the system, then it's going to assign administrative privilege privileges to you, the local machine. Congratulations, you have finished installing your copy of the Windows 2000 Professional. Setting up an internet connection after establishing your Windows 2000 Professional. What we're going to do, we're going to choose the icon which is on the screen. We can either choose the Internet Explorer icon or the Internet Connection icon, both of which, which will bring us to the same place. Currently we're going to choose the second one, which brings us into a wizard, which gives us a choice of either connecting through the modem or through the LAN connection. I have the LAN connection, so this is why I'm making the choice of LAN connection, either or depending on which is your system configuration. Once again, the internet connection, either a modem or a network LAN connection. Now we're asked to set up the internet configuration, the network configuration, Usually it's recommended, as you can see, to choose automatic discovery of the proxy server. And then after this we are asked whether we want to set up an internet email account, which we're currently not going to do. Click Next once again, and this is it. And now we should be connecting to the internet. And here it is. Thank you very much. There are additional ways of installing Windows 2000 Professional. One is installing over a network. There's additional requirements that must be met by the client computer. It must have network client software and must have an existing 685 megabyte partition. The distribution server must be set up in order to copy files to client machines. Step number one, initialize client network software by connecting to the distribution server. Step number two, start setup program, run Wint exec or Wint32 exec. Step number three, your computer will be rebooted and the text portion of the setup will begin. The automated installation process is RIS, Remote Installation Services, is a Windows 2000 deployment tool which can automate the installation so that the user only has to turn the system on and the installation can complete itself. This is used for large standardized deployments. RIS must be installed on a server through the setup wizard. Server can be either a domain controller or a member server. The service is then automated to respond to clients' requests. 
the client must have supported network adapter card and a remote installation boot disk. The client then connects to the server running RIS and downloads their operating system installation files. RIS can be configured to store multiple images on its local drive. Unattended installation files are script files that automate the installation process. Easy to use by less knowledgeable staff and there's less chance of humor error are some of the advantages of it. The administrator can create these files, start the installation process, and let it set itself up. UDF files can be created by using Windows Setup Manager or by using a simple text editor. UDF stands for Uniqueness Database File. These files are used to configure unique aspects of the computer, like the computer name. The last option is hard drive imaging, which is basically duplicating the hard drive image and transferring it to another system. The problem is that the computer names and security identifiers are also duplicated. To solve this, you can use the sysprep tool. This prepares a system which you will be du duplicating. Mm -hmm.